Um, on my left, I've got Isla Goxel, CEO, Mother Child Education Foundation, and Miriam Mason Sese, co founder of Educade. Uh, just a reminder that we are obviously live streaming, and you can tweet. Feel free to hashtag gems. Uh, please remember that, of course, the world will see what you're, uh, what you're tweeting. Um, so we're going to have an initial vote. If everyone could take their clickers, these uh, devices. Um, the instructions all seem to be there. So if anyone uh, doesn't understand, A f right, A is for the motion and B is against. Just to remind, C is undecided. I will repeat the motion. That is that this house believes that the primary purpose of education is to help young people get jobs. A is for, B against, C is undecided. 10 seconds to vote. There's the music. <coughs> okay, wow, so we've got a pretty close race, really. Um, it's going to be an interesting one. We've got 38% for, 50 against, uh, 13 undecided, so everything to play for there. That 13% could well sway the debate. Um, just a reminder, final reminder, that the debate we are having is whether this house believes the primary purpose of education is to help people get jobs. And I would like to start with the um, party to my right arguing for the motion. Thank you. If you would like to give your opening statement. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this house believes that the primary purpose of education is to help young people get jobs. An extremely simple and straightforward statement if we were in 1950. In 2017, it is a very complex statement with major implication. I understand it could be controversial, and to be honest, myself, uh, my first reaction was, of course, education is not only about work. However, when you think it through and evaluate what is at stake here, you will come to the same conclusion, which is, in 2017, the primary purpose, not the sole purpose, of education is to help young people get meaningful work, help them fulfill their dreams, and leverage their talent. To support this statement, we're going to make three distinct points. The first, we'll examine the changing nature of work and jobs. Second, we'll share with you uh, what employers look for in general. And third, instill, if we may, a sense of urgency and call to action where the educators are center stage. First, let's examine the changing nature of work and jobs. World famous uh, Jubran, Khalil Jubran, a wise man from Mount Lebanon, said, you work so that you may keep pace with the earth and the soul of the earth. My grandfather, who lived not far from where Jubran grew up, uh, had two jobs. He worked the fields and was a master builder, working from dawn to dusk and beyond, nonstop. If he saw me working today, I can only imagine what he would say. You know, I'm, I'm meetings, making phone calls, video conferencing, attending prestigious events. He would say, the boy is on vacation. So work has changed and will continue to do so. The working week 100 years ago in the US was 70 hours. Today it's 40, and in some countries it's less than that. Who said it is the end of it? The best paying job in the USA today is, guess what? It's a mobile app developer, a job that did not exist a few years back. Education must prepare the young people to deal with uncertainty, 
complexity and ambiguity and prepare them for jobs that do not yet exist. Education, preparing young people for work, for work is not what it used to be. It just got harder, much harder. Nevertheless, we should embrace the change and accept the challenge, not divest from this purpose. What do employers, second point, what do employers look for? Uh, we take, for instance, the IT sector where I, I have worked all my life. We look for four things. Number one, a good cultural fit. Number two, strong cognitive abilities. Number three, leadership qualities. And number four, subject matter expertise. Guess what? We will never compromise on the top three. We only compromise on the subject matter expertise. And the top three, what are they? They are the skills of the 21st century. In short, society and the global workplace need skills of the 21st century. It's not, isn't it, isn't this what education reform is all about? Equipping learners of 21st century uh, with, uh, with skills so that they can not only survive but also grow healthier, happier, and prosper in the real world doing meaningful work. Let me attempt, let us attempt to instill a sense of urgency and the need to act now. Th there is something fundamentally wrong. Entire sectors from technology to healthcare struggle to fill open positions while millions of people cannot find work. Many who do work feel underemployed. This results in a dysfunctional society where millions are discouraged and many, too many, disfranchised. McKinsey quantified the magnitude of the crisis. In 2016, the country surveyed around the world, in the country surveyed, 30 to 45% of the working age population is either unemployed, inactive, or working part-time. In seven countries like Brazil, China, Germany, India, Japan, UK, and the US, this amount to 850 million people. The youth situation is even more alarming. According to the ILO, 40% of the global youth labor workforce lives in poverty, whether they work or not. Unemployment and underemployment have reached new heights that cannot be neglected. It's a crisis. It's a very painful situation, especially for youth and women. Let's focus a little bit on the MENA situation, which is quite special, with 60% of the total population less than 25 years old. Uh, youth unemployment is at double, according to the ILO, double the world average. It's the highest in the world. I don't want really to over-dramatize, but you remember what happened in December 2010 with, with a young uh, person from uh, uh, Tunisia, Mohamed Bouazizi. He actually, uh, it's a dramatic, it's a very sad event. In, an educated young person that set himself on fire because of the job situation. The enormous gap between graduates and the job market, and to use Gibran analogy, between graduates and keeping in pace with the soul of the earth is a result of rampant complacency and lack of proactive cooperation between all the stock stakeholders. The issues are still unresolved, which means a great deal of pressure on all to deliver. The educators are center stage. One silver lining is the technology. How is that? Massive cooperation between the data native learners, the teachers, decision makers in the private sector and government will change the game. The medium is the message. I'm sure you've heard this one before. Collaboration in the 21st century is as important as content. Now tools are made easier to use by everyone and they significantly help us all to scale. And they are started to be turbocharged with machine learning and artificial intelligence that are game changers. They will impact K-12, vocational training, and university significantly. They will improve the learning experience and increase alignment with real life. Sorry, that is your warning. Okay. So, so I, I, today, education should be a game changer to help young people. I just finished. 30 seconds. Uh, we Thank you. Uh, so, so, education is a game changer to help young people find meaningful work and help them become the knowledge workers of the 21st century where jobs are undefined, where jobs can nevertheless fulfill 
the potential of young people and realize their dreams while contributing to the economic and social development of the world. Like Steve Jobs said, make a dent in the universe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A very, very interesting point, particularly with the MENA, the issue of unemployment in the Middle East, I think it's very interesting. Um, I'm going to move straight over to our, oppose, um, our other side. Thank you. Um, so it's very interesting that uh, the motion for uh, is going to, is, has used many of the arguments that I've, uh, I'm going to use as well, but let's see if we can flip this. So I don't usually like to start statements with a definition, but uh, in this case, I think it's actually fundamental to our argument. Education is defined by dictionary.com, so you can see I've really done my research around this. Uh, the process of imparting or acquiring general knowledge, developing the powers of reason and judgment, and generally of preparing oneself or others intellectually for mature life. Whereas training is practical education, learning to do or practice, usually under supervision in some art, trade or profession. So I would argue that education actually goes beyond training individuals for a job or a skill. The House believes that young people should have the opportunity to get jobs. On that, we can definitely agree. But uh, children are not a product for the economy. Uh, this would be a reductionist uh, approach. So I'm going to ask a series of questions. My first question is similar to the, uh, to the House, is do we know what job that we're actually preparing children for? We know that today individuals can change careers six or seven times in their lives. We can be trained as an engineer and end up as a banker, or trained as an economist and end up as an artist. Um, has the education system failed if it produces a failed economist but a wildly successful artist? We also know that technology and artificial Intelligence may in 20 years' time replace many of the jobs that school leavers today are actually going into. So, what job are we preparing young people into? Solving today's mismatch is not going to be a savvy investment in skill and further education. My second question uh, would be what stage of education or what type of education does the House believe will best help young people in their journey? Early child education, we all know, is a powerful equalizer for unequal opportunities child's most formative years. And we also know for a fact that it's most effective. Thank you. Um, it's most effective in play-based learning. Does this prepare children for a job? Does job preparation begin early or later? What play will benefit what job? My third question would be, are our lives defined only by the jobs that we hold? What about all the other roles that we have in life as parents, as friends, as members of a Education should help us become more valuable human beings and more useful members of society. We should seek to help students realize their full intellectual and personal potential, combined with a deep sense of ethical and social concern. I agree with the sense of urgency that we have facing uh, us on the subject of education, but it has to be enshrined in ethical and social concern. And we must help children develop the skills, the knowledge, and the dispos dispositions that will help them be responsible, contributing members of their community, as well as their job. Finally, how will we measure the success of education? If we measure the success of education with the number of young people in immediate employment, this will give us one indicator. But what about if we look at mobility and improvement or job satisfaction? Will we have the same success? The variety of skills that we need to thrive in society are now multifold. We all know that. But some of them we learn from our families, some we learn from our peers, or from our extracurricular activities. What about the learning that happens in these spheres, which may also impact our jobs? Should all of this learning also be about the jobs that uh, we are trying to prepare children for? Education is the foundation of our societies. I think we've agreed on that. It's how we set up our civilizations, how we progress as individuals and society as a whole. Thus, our education system should enable students to prepare themselves for full and balanced lives. The Association for American Colleges and Universities recently uh, produced a report, and they believe there is an essential set of learning outcomes essential for success in today's world, similar to the 21st century skills that the speaker before me mentioned. The knowledge of human cultures and the natural and physical world, intellectual and practical skills, individual and social responsibilities, and integrative learning learning to learn and adapting to environments. So any purpose statement that restricts the aim of education to employment 
and does not address the outcomes aimed by these learning outcomes will fail to provide individuals the right to holistic development and thereby actually decelerate the progress of our societal development. So, what should education do? What is actually really done for centuries, maybe? In its simplest form, if education can provide a mind equipped to think, as John Har James Harvey said, this will be the most important work skill of all. And as Sadhguru said this morning, developing children only to serve an economy is actually a crime against humanity. Thank you. Imagine you're 18 years old, straight out of college, and stranded with no meaningful vocation. You graduate without social security, without promise of economic stability, without assurance that you will spend the rest of your life doing something you love, with all your years of economic struggle in vain. Ladies and gentlemen, this may sound like a scary situation to you, but this is the unfortunate reality of the world we live in. Studies show that one in four people cannot find jobs that pay them over a dollar a day. 25 to 40% of the people that do find good jobs are underskilled for the work they do. The motion that stands before us today is undeniably one of direct consequence to the youth of my generation. And as second speaker on side proposition, I would like to reaffirm the points made by our first speaker and give you a more global and personal perspective of the issue. To support this statement, I will be focusing on three major points today. First, why character development and the pursuit of knowledge cannot be isolated from professional development. Second, the impact of purposeful education on the, on the economy. And finally, the direct effect of this motion on graduating students. Somebody once said, the purpose of education is not to manufacture good workers, but to manufacture good citizens. And I agree. In today's day and age, it is of unprecedented importance that every student is equipped with a certain set of skills, such as leadership and collaborative ability, amongst others. But what use are these skills if the students aren't given the opportunity to use them to contribute towards the betterment of society? In a time where country stability is determined by the economy, how are these students supposed to be good citizens if they cannot contribute good work first? Perhaps the most common misconception today is that teaching strong values and individual character development in schools is to be prioritized over professional development, rather than establishing a good job as the goal of completing your education, more and more schools around the world are starting to emphasize on the importance of, on the importance of personal discovery and the quest for knowledge over what they consider more objective aims, such as the pursuit of job, uh, as, such as the pursuit of work after graduation. However, what most in institutions fail to acknowledge is the fact that personal and professional development are inextricably linked. As companies have gradually begun shifting the, their focus towards looking for leaders who are capable of learning more rather than workers who know more. We do not deny that individualistic growth is an essential part of the education process, right? And is the main contributor to a fulfilled individual being able to express themselves through their work. But while education may certainly focus on aspects of holistic character, de uh, character development, the main aim of education is ultimately to guide students towards professional growth. The skills they pick up on the way, the, the values that are instilled into them, certainly catalyze the process, but cannot replace work as the eventual goal without the promise of a good future. The second point I would like to submit is the impact of purposeful education on the economy. Studies show that if all students in low-income countries had basic reading abilities, we could eradicate nearly 12% of world poverty, simply because they would be more eligible to find work. The evidence shows that people who fall under this category just need one skill. They aren't expected to be or expect to become authors or sports people. They expect to learn to survive. What the world needs isn't always more poets, but it always needs more stomachs to be filled. The aim of education is sustenance, and sustenance requires meaningful work. Today, we encounter unemployment within the largest youth population the world has ever seen. Coupled with the advent of advanced technology, it holds negative implications for the people of my generation. It means that some of us could end up unemployed and economically unstable, despite having spent years in the system. 
In cases like this, what incentive do young people have to go to school? Why spend nearly three quarters of our lives working towards a future with no assurance? Without a primary aim, education cannot be designed to deliver purposefully. But without meaningful work, students are caught in an abstract loop of economic uncertainty. So the way, so the way we on side proposition see it, the quest for a job can fill the position of a purpose that education systems require to be able to pace their steps correctly. Finally, I would like to talk about how this motion affects the youth. I am 16 years old. I represent the youth. I graduate from high school in a year and plan to pursue um, a research in astrophysics upon graduating and hopefully carry it through as a career. But let me tell you something, I hated physics. To the 11 year old me, classroom physics was a way around the legal system for schools to be able to torture children. However, as much as I despised it, this one physics teacher I had constantly told me to delve deeper, explore the subject, or I'd end up with a mundane job working for people I didn't know, doing something I didn't love. As fear overtook my dislike for the subject, I started reading beyond the school's textbook. The more I read, the more connected I felt to the world around me, because I understood why things are the way they are. The want for a good future and work that I love doing is what eventually led me to find something that I wouldn't mind spending the rest of my life doing. And it is important that education is the cause every student finds their something. It is important that education is the reason every student finds their purpose. And for these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to vote in favor of the motion. Thank you very much for that speech. Um, and our final uh, argument. Good afternoon. We've heard inspirational ideas and thinking from particularly our youngest colleague but I'm going to still argue against her. The House believes that the primary purpose of education is to get young people jobs. Really? I've spent two days with some of what we're calling 120 of some of the best teachers in the world. And we've been thinking about education and its purposes. Work did not feature. Many of the statistics that you've cited, I believe, are the reason why. The context I know best is Sierra Leone. 70% of the 18 to 35 year olds in Sierra Leone are unemployed. Um, our last year's Global Teacher Prize winner, Hanan, tells me that way beyond the 15% that showed up in 2015 the workforce are unemployed in the West Bank. She doesn't see her primary purpose as preparing people for work, but in preparing people to live and to live well. We've been talking for the last two days. We will continue talking for the next two days about preparing young people to be good global citizens. A part of that, a component, will be constructive workers. But it's only a component, and if that drives, then it drives us down such a utilitarian direction that, as Sadhguru told us this morning, it becomes a crime against humanity. We're driving only our economic purposes and needs, and we're not looking at how to actually become more fully human, how to become fully human, developing all of our aspects, not just our economic output. Are we really, really going to say that those who won't ever work, there's no point really in educating them? Those who are fortunate enough to be able to be um, parents at home and they have a partner who supports that, they don't need an education. Those who have disabilities that make work impossible, those that live in economic, economies that at the moment aren't able to provide employment for them. What, they don't need an education because the prime purpose of education is really just to get a job? What we need is global citizens who are able to cope when 
what the utilitarian world is saying is your justification. This is who you are. Your identification, your reason for being is, I'm an economic producer. I am a this. It's our first question so often. What do you do? And then you're belittled if you aren't doing something significant. We need a society that is thinking about how to be compassionate, how to be kind, that values values, not just economic output and what work you do. Today, I would urge you, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, to join us in opposing the motion that this House believes that the primary purpose of education is to find young people jobs. Thanks everyone for very prompt speeches. We only heard the alarm once, so that's very, very good. Um, I can see there are a lot more people here now, so I would like to really turn it over to you to see what you guys want to hear and what you guys want to ask either side. Um, I think the issue here we have is, of course, the, this word primary. I mean, that's, that's the fundamental bit of this debate. I think we both, on both sides, value education. Uh, obviously, speak very movingly about it, but it's this word primary. So. I'm interested in that. Um, who would like to ask a question? Let's start. Sorry. We, yes, do we have a microphone? I think we're going to start over here. Gentlemen. I think the mic's on its way. Hello. OK. Um, I, I had a question. Um, when it was referenced before that many of the jobs that we as educators are teaching people for haven't even been invented yet. If my primary focus is to teach people to get a job, what exactly am I supposed to be teaching them in order to prepare them to get this job that by the time, and being a grade 12 teacher, the job, I don't even know what it is yet. Um, I feel that it's more about the skills and the critical thinking process so that they can adapt and be innovative, not here's a job that I'm going to, or have you make that decision yet? And I was just wondering if you could respond to that question. It's interesting, and we have a similar, um, of course, in the UK and, and in America too, I mean, jobs become redundant, don't they? And then if somebody's trained to be, say, a minor or something like that, they don't have that anymore, so how do you deal with that? So you, you don't uh, educate, when you're talking K to 12, you don't educate for, for a specific job that doesn't exist. So what you need to do is to uh, teach the kids how to be creative, how to have critical thinking, how to work in team, and, uh, and think out of the box, communicate, uh, instill in them or encourage the leadership qualities, all these things that eventually employers and vibrant marketplaces like the IT and healthcare want. The, 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 the job market, which is actually a vibrant place to be, it's been depicted as, as something evil. It's not, actually. It's a lot of fun, and, and people, people can really uh, grow and, and prosper and be happy and healthy. But to do that, uh, they, they need to have those 21st century skills that we're all so passionate about. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question, perhaps, for my... Um Colleagues on the left here. Okay, this gentleman over here in the blue t-shirt. Thank you very much. Um, just to uh, Miriam, I was just you. You talked about um, people who are fortunate enough to have a family and stay at home. Um, potentially not. <coughs> sorry. Um, uh, whether or not we should educate them. Um, and I just wanted to talk about the, the classification, you know, how, how do we classify a job? Um, is their position not part of the, <coughs> excuse me, the economy um, in the sense that they are, you know, they should be educated so that they can educate the family that they're raising. Um, they should be, uh, they're, they're part of a system that allows uh, a society to thrive. Um, so in a sense, are we not, should that not be part of our education, that we classify that potentially as a, as a job um, and, you know, something that 
that we can educate them for. Um, I think, obviously, whatever role you're playing, one can classify it as a job. And certainly, if mother at home, she has hundreds and hundreds of jobs. Dad at home has hundreds and hundreds of jobs. But we're not usually talking about preparing for that sort of a job. And our colleagues for the motion were talking about having... Um, employment in the sense of going out and discovering areas of, of knowledge and physics and whatever is a great example. I'm, I'm, if you want to put it like that, all of our job is to be a global citizen. Let's prepare for that job. If we're going to change the terminology, then we can change the terminology. If we're talking about um, jobs in the sense of paid employment, which we usually are, then I would say then it's not going to be our primary purpose because so many people are excluded from that category. Oh, sorry, uh, over here, the lady in the white. So I have a question for the, the other side. Um, I forget the exact statistic, but I think it's around 75% of people hate their jobs. And as we're moving, you know, with exponential technology, some tech evangelists argue that maybe by 2030, jobs can have more or less become obsolete. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts with that kind of world where, again, we have no idea whether this is the world that will end up, you know, the world that we'll, we'll end up seeing that with some tech evangelists, it's all our needs will be met. It'll be a matter of reorganizing atoms and all of our basic needs will you know, be provided for. Energy will be free, travel will be free. Um, you can 3D print food. So in that scenario, what are your thoughts on the purpose of education then in terms of teaching children to create value, um, which isn't necessarily a position, it could be arts, it could be literature, it could be music. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you said 75% of people hate their jobs, right? So what we feel the purpose of education is, is to help these students figure out what they're gonna be able to hold and sustain for the rest of their lives at the base level. When they're in school, if they figure out something they have a, they have a lot of passion for, if they, they find, an area in any field that they're able to hold, that they will be able to hold a job in for the rest of their lives, that makes everything so much more easier, right? You won't have people hating their jobs once they graduate. Instead, they have a job that they love and they don't mind doing for the rest of their lives. And you also said that a lot of jobs are gonna be redundant in a few years. That is exactly what, why we need education to actually tell people how to find jobs. We need to educate people on where they're going to be able to find jobs if they're not going to be able to find it in areas of their passion. Once they graduate, they need to know what their options are, what, which fields are open to them, right? And unless schools provide that education at the grassroots level, no one's, they're not going to know until they graduate and until they, find, until they face hardships in the real world. And I think it's better to cut that it's better to cut that off at the base, basic level rather than have them go and experience something they don't want to, <laughs> to find what they really are passionate about. It's interesting, and if you permit me to um, move on from that, actually, I, mean, I don't think that there is a, an issue. Is, is there not an issue with the fact that we don't consider enough what people will do when they graduate, for example, or that everybody maybe goes to university and does arts degrees and some people really should be thinking, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to do that. I want to do something else or learn a trade or, I mean, there's a sense in the UK definitely that that's the case and that there's not enough given to what people are going to do when they leave university. Yeah, asking, yeah. Well, I'm impartial, of course. Um, I think, I think you've, you're, contributing to and being part of the thinking that is happening to a lot of education, which is it's become very utilitarian. And it is only about getting towards jobs. 
And that's why it's not working. That's why it's not working is that people are not um, pursuing things that they are driven by and excited by with a goal of becoming a better human and a more able to say, this is my identity as a person, not as an engineer, as a this, as a that. So that when things change, when you know different opportunities come up, um, they can they can be flexible. They can move. It's so often that we are we are being told the purpose of education is to target you for this job. The purpose of education is to raise your levels of thinking. Is to enable you to be a better human. Is to is to move you up to a certain. Age. I did a French degree. When do I use that? Nearly never. Um, and that's not really the point. It was about getting to a certain level of thinking, putting me in a position to be having different levels of relationships. Um, I'm now doing my PhD. It's, again, it's enabling me to encounter all sorts of different people. I believe passionately in education, and it's going to serve some utilitarian purposes. But let me tell you, the, the intrinsic values that we have really lost with this utilitarian drive of preparing for the economy, preparing for work, means that we are, we are underselling ourselves dramatically, I feel. Mm. Well, what, what do you guys think about the, the argument that you're kind of utilitarian thinking as opposed to creating something for a yeah. job? So, um, yeah. of course, you know, it's easy to put labels and call jobs utilitarian. Actually, they're not. They are inspiration. Jobs and work is inspiration and is meaningful. Uh, when well with the purpose of working as a utility. So I'm really concerned when 120 teachers meet and they never talk about uh, uh, work, meaningful work. That's probably you know, the root cause of it. We've divested from the purpose of actually giving people meaningful purpose to their job. And yes, being an artist is a job, is, is part of, pardon? Well, well, it's it's up to the artist to to uh, to do that. I mean, uh, and and to uh, to to get the proper rewards that he seeks, and society is there to help. But nevertheless, it's a job. An artist is a job. It's it's a wonderful one. Uh, and being an entrepreneur is a job. And being an intrapreneur is also a job. So uh, so 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 I, I I dispute the the word utilitarian, uh, and I I think. Uh, Economy is the essence of life, uh, and um, I beg to differ that uh, there's nothing wrong. Actually, it's all good if we all work uh, uh, in, in uh, you know, fulfilling our dreams and aspirations. I have, I have, t I have two minutes. So, if someone wants to ask one more quick question, this uh, gentleman at the front here has been keen. We'll have to keep it very brief, I'm afraid. Very quick. <laughs> is it on? Yes. Um, there's just couple of things one one thing is is that I keep on hearing work and jobs being mismatched um, just because you work doesn't mean you have a job you know work is is something that's different to a job and I think if you're preparing someone to go into a job that's different from preparing someone to go and work and I don't think we should conflate the two but I think something that is coming out is is what is the purpose of education is it to provide a product or is it a process um, Education is not something that people do between the age of five and 18 or 22 or whatever they do. Education is a lifelong process, yeah? And to say that the primary purpose of that process is to produce a product that is able to then function in a job is for me a little bit, um, it, it, it just, it doesn't quite match up for me. So my, you know, my question is, 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 is are you stating that the, 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 the primary function of the education system is to provide a product that will then fulfill a, a gap in the market, basically. Well, we can say, <laughs> I really would like um, uh, my partner to speak here because she, she speaks uh, uh, very pertinent to the subject. Um, so, so definitely not producing a product, it's definitely not. It's, it's, pro it's producing a human being can actually uh, prosper, grow, uh, achieve their dreams, and leverage their talents. A lot of the young people don't understand the talents that they have, and they need your guidance in education to actually unlock that potential, and unlock that potential so that they can be productive, 
members of society. Not saying this is the only, the only uh, purpose, but this should be the primary purpose because we live in a crisis. Incidentally, uh, she Ragli uh, here, she, she's interested in astrophysics, and when I asked her what do you want to do, she said either computer science or astrophysics as a first major, and as a second major, I will do music. So, you know, it's not either or, uh, it's, not, it, it's, not, uh, it's not that simple, and that's what we try to say, that the question is very complex, and, uh, and it's an interesting question. Great, so I think we're gonna have closing statements. Um, I'm sorry to not to have more questions, because this is actually just kind of getting going now, but um, would you like to start with your closing statements? More agreement than uh, we've had the opportunity to, uh, to delve into. One uh, is that uh, the primary purpose of education uh, is to help people, young, uh, help young people get jobs. Uh, we have a, um, a disagreement around the word primary. I mean, I don't think anyone is, uh, is in disagreement that young people shouldn't get jobs or young people shouldn't uh, you know, go into gainful employment if, if that's what they're seeking but the primary. So that's one thing I think that we need to uh, unpack. Uh, and the, the flip side of the coin there would also be if the primary purpose of education is to help young people get jobs, is then the primary purpose of government or the private sector to provide those jobs for those children that were, were educated. The second point uh, is really around the type of education. I think that's uh, on that, <coughs> we've managed to have some kind of agreement because we all agree that uh, we don't know what kind of jobs there are, there are going to be in the future and we need more adaptive learning and technology is advancing so fast that we don't know what kind of economy we're going to see. So the type of education and the different values and skills that we need to instill uh, is absolutely critical. And uh, I think both sides of the house have departed from the very you know, minimalist uh, just skills-based, uh, professional skills-based education. Well, I, I hope that we've at least been able to uh, inform you of that. I think for me, the most important uh, piece of this argument is the age. At what age of education are we talking about? Because uh, if you're talking about a higher education that may you know, be training for a particular uh, profession, like a doctor or a lawyer, then uh, it would be very foolish of me to argue that the purpose of higher education should not be to train for a doctor or a, uh, or a lawyer. If it's more if we're talking about if we're talking about much younger ages, then uh, we continue to believe that the primary purpose of education cannot be to uh, help young people get jobs. Thank you. There is a quote by John Adams, which I um, really like. He was the second president of the US. He said, I study science and engineering so that my kids can study economics and history so that their kids can study uh, poetry and philosophy. Um, I, I beg to differ, actually. This was 220 years ago uh, that he said that. It's not working, is it? And uh, uh, we still need engineers, 220 years, uh, and we equally need poets and philosophers and economists and historians. And they all have a job to do in, in, in society. The, the situation today is we are in crisis, real crisis. When we talk and the proposition about young people, young people, 40% of young people, as I've mentioned, are living nearly in poverty, whether they have a job or not. So this is what we call underemployment or misalignment between the, the job market and the, uh, and, and the education. And that gap is enormous. And it needs to be bridged. Absolutely. It's like, think you are in a crisis, think you are in, in, in uh, I'm sorry to use these allegories, but think you are in World War II. Everybody is mobilized. And we need the educators to mobilize to solve this issue especially here in this region, and yet also globally. So the arguments we've presented is that the nature of job has changed and work, and job means meaningful work, and could be an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, an artist, a historian, an economist. There is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. We're very far from Charlie Chaplin and the, you know, the, 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 the assembly line. This is 
uh, their jobs are way beyond all this. And you've heard my partner cry for help. Help her, don't let her down and her friends. She needs to be guided, she needs to be coached intelligently and, uh, and, and she needs to be, uh, and, and her, her friends need to be equipped with 21st century skills, you all agree, are the right skills to get into the proper job that do not exist yet. So we urge you in this very specific uh, time uh, not to divest from the main purpose of getting young people into meaningful work and contributing economically and socially to the well-being of the society. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank both sides for very eloquent and passionate arguments. I'm, I'm sad that we can't have more debate here today because it's uh, been fascinating to listen to. Um, we are now going to vote on the motion that this House believes that the primary purpose of education is to help young people get jobs. Does everyone have their clickers? So we might remember that it was very close earlier, um, so it's going to be an interesting result. A is for, B against, C undecided. If you're still undecided after that, then I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. So I think, yeah, the time is on. Play some music. Wow, so close. Yeah, well done, Kevin. So four, yeah, just, just by a, a tiny amount. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I can tell you that we started off with four at 38%, B at 50 C at 13%, and we're now up to... A at 50% and B at 44%. So um, it's a, a resounding, uh, well, not resounding actually, but it's, it's a result either way. Thanks very much um, to both sides. And I uh, hope this debate carries on in the halls outside.